why many Christians remain unmarried, not willfully, and why many more Christians will remain unmarried in the days to come. Hallelujah. Number one, the first reason why many Christians or many in the body of Christ, loving people, people who sincerely love God and fear the Lord, may remain unmarried for a very long time. The first reason here is misconceptions and confusion about the concept of the will of God or the perfect match. Write it down. The first reason is misconceptions and confusions about the concept of, you can put in quote, the will of God or the perfect match. Write it down. We hail you most high. We truly hail you. There is a widespread, uh, listen carefully, there is a widespread confusion in the body of Christ. Pentecostal circles, orthodox circles, Presbyterian circles, there is a widespread confusion and that confusion keeps multiplying as to the concept of what we have come to know in the body of Christ as the will of God in marriage. Or as we call it in a secular society, the perfect match. This has been one of the major reasons why many believers do not get married. And why many may not get married. It's a different thing if you are planning, you have your goals and so on and so forth. But there are so many people who truly desire to be married. 40 years, 50 years, 55 years, 60 years in the church. They tell you they are still trusting God. For a life partner or trusting God to settle down. And the number one reason is that there has been a misconception. Of course perpetuated by men of God. And marriage counselors and Christian counselors. And Christian books and relationship ministries. About the concept of the will of God and the perfect match. Is that true? There are so many people today. Who may never get married because they listen to a message in a marriage seminar or your pastor or another man of God or somewhere a convention a conference you went to and you heard a woman of God or a man of God you respect and admire communicate a thought about the will of God about the perfect match and the danger of making a wrong decision in marriage the grave consequence of having someone who is not designed for you and that has put fear in the body of Christ is that true unbelievers don't have any problem because they can hop into any relationship and hop out they can get married and then for for unbelievers marriage is a contract not a covenant so there is no fear I can step in and get married to this lady after two years if it does not work i throw her out and go my way so because of that um, that freedom that godlessness affords them they have no fear is that true one person can be in a relationship with 20 ladies for instance and then the person does not care frankly because he's at liberty at any time to let any of them go but there seems to be this sacredness in the body of Christ, which is very good. But if not balanced, it will mislead a lot of people. So, the fear of missing out on the will of God. The confusion as to how to really ascertain. Is there one person for a guy or a lady that has been destined when you were born? That one person was born and if you never find that person, you are in confusion. There's been all kinds of teaching like that. Is that true? And many ladies are sincerely waiting. And then um, the icing of the cake has been the concept of prophetic revelation. Prophetic revelation has further complicated this point. Right? When you identify a lady and you tell her, for instance, I'm seeing your husband in a vision. 
Your husband's name is John. He's a yellow guy, tall. Um, he's a graduate of UNN. And, and so on and so forth. And all through that lady's life, 10 years, 20 years, she convinces herself that she's enduring because of a prophetic word that was given. It doesn't matter how many Christian borrowers come around because she's motivated by the sincere desire. Now, it's not like she's trying to be difficult. Are you? Is God speaking to you already? This, this teaching tonight will bring a very radical deliverance to many people. Hallelujah. So she's waiting for the perfect match. Every guy that comes, she's looking at him based on the prophetic template. And she trusts the man of God who gave her that revelation. He may not be a fake man of God. And then for 20 years, she's waiting. And you ask her, what exactly are you waiting for? And said, all the days of my appointed time, I will wait until my change comes. Now watch this. Watch this. There are many people who waited like that and their change truly came. Someone came exactly like that and it was worth the wait. And there are others who have waited like that and five years turned to ten. Ten turned to fifteen. Fifteen turned to twenty-five years. When their colleagues, the children of their colleagues are graduating and getting married, they are still waiting for that promise. And they died in anger and bitterness. What exactly is the concept of the will of God in terms of marriage? What does the Bible teach? Not what does a marriage counselor teach. Not what, let me tell you something. Marriage is a mystery. No matter how long you are married, you cannot have enough audacity to talk about it so accurately. You know, I, I truly believe, listen, listen. I believe, um, in the fact that experience can teach a lot of things when a man has been married for 30 years 35 years i believe he has something to say but the mysterious nature of marriage is such that there is no amount of time you stay in marriage that will afford you every information and knowledge you know as far as you are living in a mortal body hallelujah is that true paul the apostle for instance was never married yet he articulated a lot of things and he guided the new testament church about marriage jesus himself was never married yet he spoke about the issue of marriage and divorce so i i want to clarify something up front there are many people who believe that because they are married they convince themselves that they have gained enough experience to tell everybody anything and they create a doctrine out of their experience and they tell everybody shut up what do you know about marriage marriage is a mystery it's not revealed by your longevity there it's revealed by the agency of the holy spirit is god helping us tonight because many erroneous books listen have come as a result of people who claim they have experience 30 years in marriage 40 years in marriage and they market their template on what they think their experience has been as at the time they were getting married there were social cultural differences at that time a woman was believed to only be dependent women did not go to school then women did not do a lot of things then a woman never dreamt of owning a house is that true a woman never dreamt of getting a job so that that ideology of marriage as per that time made a man absolutely responsible for everything and so the woman stayed at home as a responsibility whether the man treated her well or not she knew that living was never an option because the ideology given to her was that if you leave the home you have no reason to live again so that man who may have been punishing his wife for 30 years only because they are not divorced convinces himself that he has been doing the right thing because they are together are you getting the point now and he takes what is supposed to be his experience and he starts to mentor younger generations and say after all my wife is here with me we have been 30 years in marriage that woman has gone through 30 years of hell it's just that her, her ideology has kept her there and because they are not divorced the man convinces himself that he understands the formula for marriage wrong 
in our contemporary society today it is possible to come into a lady's life who already has a car she already has a house is that true probably has a very good job and so when you come um that dependency mindset maybe for instance in time past you know women had to wait exclusively for a man if he did not give her 10 naira she would not eat now a woman is the ceo of a bank and she's married to the man so obviously things have changed are you getting the point now and many of us are already on our way to a lot of confusion in time past for instance when a guy wanted to ask a lady out there's no western diplomacy you walk straight to her and say i want you to be my wife pray about it that was the end of it you try that today and see how it will hurt you in a way you will never recover from see that now a man listen listen he he got his wife that way and now he teaches you he says look stand up and take steps walk up to the lady and speak the bible says open your mouth and i'll feel it and you now get up taking 1975 or 1954 to 2015 and you go and meet the lady and said i want to marry you i hear you are from my place pray about it get back to me tomorrow because there was a, there was an arrogance that men at that time had a man was a distinguished personality educated or not it was a privilege for a man to walk up to a lady in fact there were certain arranged marriages that were done at that time that the first time the lady sees the man that's when she's leaving the house it, they didn't have any dating nonsense they did no restaurant they just called her and said abigail where are you this is your husband and she rejoiced she rejoiced because for her it was a privilege but marriage in the 21st century has changed you take that template i promise you you can pray all the tongues you want to pray you will be in for a disaster Are we ready to fly now? This is an appetizer. Hallelujah. Oh, I have many things to talk about today. My goodness. So the misconception on the concept of the will of God. What exactly does the Bible teach about the will of God? What exactly does the Bible teach? I've heard of different concepts. Concept number one is one man to one woman right what people will want to call the predeterminate counsel of god meaning that before you arrived your wife had been there she had been um she's somewhere around the earth your assignment is not to look for a woman your assignment is through whatever channel and means you can afford find that one woman and if you do not find her, you miss out on the will of god and there have been testimonies both for or against that concept the interesting thing about marriage is any point you raise whether godly or ungodly there are testimonies to prove its validity are you seeing the confusion now any point you raise about marriage there are testimonies to prove its validity that's what makes it very very technical because whatever perspective you look at it there are people who will agree with it and there are people who will disagree with it the concept of one man and one woman for instance there are people who have given us stories that they were minding their business and they saw a vision that's where the concept of vision came from is that not true they saw a vision the name of the lady her address and everything and it happened exactly as they saw we have watched on tv and gone for many conferences when a man of god can help a woman decipher certain things and tell her with accuracy the life partner for her so that revelation now brings us to a point where there is even more confusion in the body of christ if a man of god can tell me exactly the name of my husband why beat around the bush why not just pay the price and look for a man of God whose discernment has been proven to work well and just sow into his life and let this man please end the confusion in my life hallelujah let me tell you the danger of this it has brought more confusion especially to singles ladies have you seen 10 guys come to you 
and every one of them told you i had a dream i saw a vision and they are not lying they are not telling a lie are you getting me i counsel people all the time and you can find multiple guys or multiple ladies all having a vision or a dream about the same person and you may think they are just corny no 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 some of them were minding their business some of them have had repeated dreams and visions for others as much as 50 or 100 about the same person how do are you am i blessing you tonight and now this innocent brother minding his business has seen all kinds of visions every time he sleeps this is the sister he's seeing and then the sister is engaged engaged to somebody who is born again and this guy is confused he does not know what to call the name of his situation right now should i pray for that relationship to be broken should i disagree with my visions and yet nobody is speaking about it on stage there are many believers just jumping but carrying loads of confusion and guessing what they think their way around this relationship thing is this is one of the reasons why there is no marriage in the church hallelujah to an extent that many people today do not even trust their dreams and visions or any experience again because you had a dream about brother a he married in your very presence now the dream changed brother b he's getting married next week and you just say no 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 something is wrong i know i'm not demonized but i know something is wrong how many brothers are patiently waiting for some sisters now do you know that some people have even trusted god to an extent that even when the guy is married unconsciously they begin to wish the lady death because they believe that that my what is my own is my own you go to prophetic ministries and i, I don't say this in a critical way and see the names of brothers and sisters that fly around the altar of men of God engaging all kinds of mysteries of restoration mysteries of reclaiming mysteries of of forcing what is your own to come to you the Bible says thy word is a light to my feet and a lamp to my path let me tell you something if nobody talks about this there will be more confusion in the body of Christ you will find ladies in their 30s and their 40s not getting married pretty lady virtuous lady but the fear every time a lady wants to enter a relationship she remembers a prophecy she had every time a lady wants to enter a relationship she just things am i so desperate that i'm giving up the better now to take the good let me be a little patient maybe my change will come this has hurt the sisters more you know why because the brothers are the ones who do the asking the sisters do the positioning and it's frustrating to position yourself under factors that are very ambiguous as a guy what's come to us you just say lord stop me if i'm wrong i'm on my way going there are two ways God can lead you. Start or stop. He can initiate it or you move and say, Lord, if it's against your will, stop me. But for a lady, her job is to position herself. And brothers and sisters, it's frustrating when you position yourself and you keep positioning yourself days turn to weeks, to months, to years, to decades. misconception on the confusion about the will of God and the perfect match number two second reason why many Christians remain unmarried ready unreasonable standards and expectations unreasonable standards and expectations either from the guy or from the lady or from both of them the reason why many people in the body of Christ will remain unmarried for a long time is what i call unreasonable standards and expectations write it down please look up now we are not against compromising the scriptural standards 
that God has put. The Bible is very clear about certain standards that believers should not compromise. However, when the standards become unreasonable, when the expectations become unreasonable, what are some of those expectations? Unreasonable expectations on financial status. Unreasonable expectation on levels of establishment. Unreasonable expectation about physical appearances, physique, and etc. One of the reasons why our parents married fast was that their standards were fair enough for anybody to just get married. But right now, believers in our beat to say, look, I'm excellent. I'm the head and not the tail. Even the neck I won't take. I'm the head and not the tail. You see, so those, those motivational teachings, which are very important and very good, have brought us to a point where in a bit to have a discontent for average we have exaggerated it and lifted bars up there are ladies for instance who have vowed that they must marry a millionaire they have sworn between them and their destiny no matter what the man is doing if he's not a millionaire i will not marry him he must be born again and he must be a millionaire there are guys who have vowed that he must be a fair lady or a dark lady or a slim lady right it must be a lady that speaks queen's english it must be a lady that studied in faculty of arts i won't take science i won't take medicine people are that meticulous right now there are unreasonable standards the lady i must marry must be a lady with an exceptional dress sense must be a lady who is a chef must be a lady who is a prophetess must be a lady who is this and that and by the time you array all those standards the only person who fits those standards is jesus christ hallelujah is god speaking to us how many ladies have harassed brothers because of financial status what are you doing this is how god is helping me i'm starting look look let me tell you up front if if god does not help you faster i will be on my way it should better help you you need god to be your ebenezer fast because i can't wait there is a standard i i, I am a i am a high maintenance lady i don't use with one less than three thousand or five thousand my clothes are designers are you willing and the brother stands there stupefied and confused not knowing what to do with himself now it's okay to laugh but i hope you are getting the message so financial status one of the biggest barriers how many brothers have gotten into things that are ungodly because they are trying to match up a standard it even gets worse when there are other friends involved in the relationship who want to tap their share of the national cake they say i helped you i was part of the process for this relationship i my own share must come out so if you are taking her to mr biggs you are taking four people tells you these are my covenant friends we are church people what you do to one you do to all and you see the pressure financial status and then the issue of establishment do you have a car no do you what kind of house do you have rented or your personal house say well i'm, I'm renting somewhere how many one bedroom just self-contained no 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 self-contained what happens when my mother comes what happens when my sisters come what happened when look i'm a notable person in church everybody knows me what is all this where are the extra rooms you want to embarrass me you want to drive us out to the parlor and there are all kinds of confusion and the guy is now wondering well i rented this house seventy thousand, but right now as it is to be able to get a three-bedroom flat to be almost maybe seven hundred thousand or five hundred thousand and the lady said me i'm not ready for anything unreasonable standards make sure as i speak you'll be looking at yourself in this message then physical appearance brothers 
brothers physical appearance there's no lady that is enough she must be this she must be that her eyelashes must lap the the, the coverture must be meticulous oh come on i'm a young man how old do you think i am 100 years she must be this figure eight figure whatever and all of that she's a lady that when she's smiling i want to see bright teeth i, I don't see what wants what, what looks like my own i already have bad dentition if i you see let me tell you listen listen there's nothing wrong in desiring all these wonderful things except that the bible does not leave us in confusion as to the fact that these things no matter how great will fade with time are you hearing what i'm saying so there are many brothers who will never get married to a lady because they think they have unreasonable standards and i have watched this with my own eyes i've watched it put pressure on ladies i've seen ladies under pressure because now that they are aware that many christian brothers seem to have stepped the bar to the sky they are so physically conscious even in church open your mouth and pray and you are, you are talking about something a destiny altering prayer and you watch the way the lady is praying because somehow in her mind she's aware that somebody is looking at her once your face is rough even if it's temporary you are in a hurry to adjust it that prayer, your powder and all of that you see that over consciousness of the physical appearance has destroyed a lot of people there are people who cannot go to certain churches because they think they do not fit to the physical mode i don't have the clothes i don't think i have this and that second reason why we don't marry unreasonable standards and expectations let's hurry up number three difficulty in early establishment write it down and i'll, I'll explain difficulty in early establishment this is an african predicament sadly the continent of africa has produced a lot of delay in marriage because in africa as a continent and nigeria there is difficulty the average young man cannot guarantee that within the first 25 years of his life he will be established when there are strikes in an institution somebody goes for a course of four years and ends up spending five years six years seven years is that true and then you are supposed to probably go for service and then it is prolonged and delayed all of these institutional factors have contributed to making it difficult for young people to get established and then the high unemployment rate out of a set of graduates maybe one million less than a hundred thousand of them are guaranteed to get very decent jobs within the first three years and because the brother is not a thief it becomes very difficult very difficult to be established the poor salary structure in nigeria has accounted for the late establishment of many people is God speaking to us tonight? An average graduate in Nigeria can be so humiliated to an extent there are masters people collecting salaries of less than 20,000, 15,000. There are masters holders doing security works at the gate because they are desperate. They have to make ends meet. Hallelujah. And so someone pays the price goes to school learns graduates do all the rigors of 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 the 6334 system only for you to face a poor salary structure look at me with twenty thousand let's let's use an average job let's say a teacher with twenty thousand in how many years will you ever know what establishment is assuming you got a job immediately 20,000 times 12 is what? Help me please. 240. Multiply that times 10 years if nothing changes. 2.4 million. What is the average budget 
for establishment do a little mathematics on your head if you get a self-contained as a young man or a single bedroom or a two-bedroom flat and god helps you you are dreaming of getting a little car no matter how little equipping the house with everything you find out that that money will barely feed you and in africa the average young man has some siblings depending on him right if it's a polygamous family you still have step brothers and step sisters may god help you that you are not the first son added responsibility and then the lady you want to get married to if she comes from a family that are really trusting god for a savior and you come in before any talk of marriage starts your response you kick right away into your responsibility so add all these factors together difficulty in settling down we have even for those who want to start businesses we have very strict business policies in nigeria for instance in in london right and england and every other part like that uh, parts of britain you can register a company in 10 minutes how many minutes 10 minutes you can actually go online and register a company in 10 minutes in nigeria you try to register a company you will first spend between 60 to 150 thousand right for an average small size company and it will take you at least two to three months think about the difficulty so it is difficult for the average young man who wants to walk in the dignity of kingdom integrity to be established so in nigeria you find a young man 30 years 35 even 40 years still in his father's house not necessarily because he's not responsible and he went to school but the times are Is God helping us tonight? The fourth reason why many in the body of Christ remain unmarried and may happen like that for a long time. Are you ready for point number what now? Four, parental influences. Ungodly parental influences. Ungodly parental influences. There are godly parental influences where parents guide their children guide their children to make right decisions guide their children to be established but it's unfortunate that in africa and especially in nigeria there are very very poor and ungodly parental influences that have stopped people from getting marriage influences ranging from cultural barriers to high and unreasonable marriage requirements and then the influences of parents and family even after marriage see that there are many parents who have stopped their children for instance from settling down because they have created certain standards how many of you seated here looking at me your parents have warned you directly or indirectly don't ever bring a poor man in this house there are some of you they carried the map of nigeria and showed you very clearly and said every state i marked x on don't bring any guy from there is that true and so the lady is there and all she's doing is looking for someone from her place and 25 rolls around 50 or 30 years 35 and she's still searching for a godly brother don't forget she's not just searching for anybody there are parents who are so desperate about marrying from their place they don't care whether he's born again or not you would rather marry a failure from your place so that those cultural barriers in fact there are families where even from your place you don't marry there is a clan they have drawn a line for you on is that true the reason why it was very easy for many parents is because during their time listen carefully during their time um we did not have the issue of migration and movement from one place to the other an average man can be born and bred and grow up and die within a locality like zaria and never even visit a place like abuja is that true and so because of that they live what we call a communal life all the ladies will go to the stream together to fetch water or go to bath together and so it was easy the guys knew where to go and look for the ladies 
they knew that when it was evening they had traditional dances they had all kinds of platforms that brought them together but the world in the 21st century has changed many of you have never been to your village you don't even know where it is you only have had the name or seen it on tv some of us have never gone to our village and now they are mounting pressure on you come home we'll prepare a lady for you and you're saying what are you saying they said that's that's how that's how my your your father and i got married unfortunately this is very strong especially among the mothers is god helping us and so there are many christians confused how many believers are in godly relationships godly relationships by god's standards but do not have the courage to even talk to their parents because the moment they say mommy or daddy there's something i want to tell you they say what is it they say i want to talk about marriage you say let me even before i even hear the nonsense you have to tell me does the guy have a car yes or no no long story not he's going to buy does he have a car yes or no parents have stopped children from marrying because of car parents have stopped children from marrying how many parents have stopped children from marrying because they say if you must marry this guy he must be willing to come and live in abuja or live in lagos or come and stay close to us have you seen people like that maybe he's a lecturer in yola or a lecturer in gombe state or in zaria or in kano they say i don't want to hear anything if you will come to lagos or you will come to port Harcourt and settle there then i can allow him i consider that to be the height of self-centeredness and at extreme levels wickedness many parents i'm sorry to say this but i say this without apology that there are so many parents who have not followed the path of success in their life and they have failed and are now using their children as a restoration tool many parents have yoked their ladies and said look you know we have suffered you better go and bring a man that will wipe our tears mommy there are two guys who are standing you say hey, the first guy loves god and you find the mother not interested in what the daughter is saying he loves god he's very serious in fact the way he's going it looks like they ordain him and the mother is looking ordain that that ordain him just irritates her because now they, they it means that he's going into ministry there's one other one he's not serious he's not nice but god is helping him he's working here and there there's a, a place where he's working he's getting good salary he says so who are you choosing now he said oh, honestly me i'm a christian he said look leave that you know the world has changed you better go to that brother and then how many children cost their parents in their homes cost their parents how many mothers and fathers carry guilt all around because whenever the man beats up the woman because of not knowing the lord they come back home and the parents say just go back it's, it's like that ungodly parental influences others have influenced their children because of their ego they have a cabal of people and all their friends their children married wealthy people is that true and so when you come this is especially for many of us the ladies they just feel uncle so 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 his son married a senator's son and to this his son came from uk i have i have watched with shock the way arranger has been done on the internet parents go all out of their way to make arrangement they say there is a guy in france as he's coming into nigeria he's coming to marry all this dowry thing people shout about that guy just knows dowry was paid he's not even aware of the basket he has never seen the box that was given but simply because he's in france he came into nigeria carried the wife in two weeks took her and they never saw their daughter again only to get to france and they found out that the guy was a drug baron but he lied to them that he was a ceo how about unreasonable marriage requirements you pay dowry in cash hundred thousand in kind one million are you saying that kind of thing unreasonable requirements uncles and aunties and well-wishers that never gave you 10 naira when you were in school now that you are done they come in as stakeholders 
and they dominate everything. Say we can't allow our daughter to marry cheap. You are going to bring a cow, and that cow is not just any kind of cow. The cow must be this and that. After that, you are going to bring two two trucks of yam. After that, you are going to bring ABC, and the guy is shaking there. The guy is wondering. How much is the budget for an average marriage right now in Nigeria? I'm talking of a decent marriage. You won't imagine. How much is to rent where 40 or 50 people from your village are coming? How much is to rent that place? And feed them. And many come. After the marriage, they will never go back. They'll say, want to wait one week and see what is going on. And all through that one week, you are paying. These are very real issues. So a young man saves money to start up life. After marriage, he starts his home with debt. And then in anger, he now starts beating the wife. Are you seeing that now? Because he, if the wife shouts at him, he says, I bought you. I didn't pay dowry for you. I literally purchased you. So don't even open your mouth and shout. If I bring a concubine in this house, just go out quietly. Don't even tell me anything. Many issues we are pretending in church that are not serious issues. And it's increasing. Increasing. There are many parents that put pressure on their children. Look, this is our marriage. Um, an ambassador is coming from UK. A governor is coming from Adamawa State. Our uncle who is in Jerusalem is coming in. So make sure that you organize the marriage to the taste of the dignitaries that are coming and the young man is saying look i'm starting out small you say mr man I, we are telling you now it's not an advice you either choose the lady or leave everything but the lord of sabaoth is watching let me tell you because many of the parents who are talking like that they could not buy one tuba of yam when they married our mothers is that true one tuba of yam yet the woman believed in them she got up 13 years 15 years 18 years 20 years and naively followed that man and for 10 years of their marriage she was in hell she watched him go to school and become blessed and today now he can stand and forget what god did for him how many parents forget one of our mothers in lagos i remember one time she was talking to us we went for a program and then they are very wealthy people very comfortable and very wealthy and she was talking and uh, she was saying when it was time to get married there was one other man who was who seemed to be more blessed than her husband and they were influencing her and she said no this is the man she will marry and she said when she married her husband he had nothing although he argued and said he had a bicycle but she said he had nothing today they are blessed and their marriage is heaven on earth many of us ladies would have married since 2005 or 6 or 7 till now we are waiting because there are certain ungodly parental influences let's hurry up number number what number 5 the fifth reason why many Christians remain unmarried is what I call increased breakdown in moral and spiritual standards increased breakdown in moral and spiritual standards increased breakdown in moral and spiritual standards standards that have been lowered look at me there are uh, because our generation has so downgraded the sacredness of marriage right and morality things ranging from premarital affairs right now is is okay to just sleep around so all of the things that are supposed to be the blessings and the benefits that should only be enjoyed within the context of marriage are now being experienced by people after marriage so there is no desire there is no longing there's nothing to look forward to in marriage again how many people do you know a man and a woman 
not married. Dowry has not been paid, but they live together. Why should they marry? Are you getting what I'm saying now? Why should a lady marry when marriage would tie her to one man and then she's permitted to have seven or eight men who can supply her finances and now you want to tie her down to one man? She doesn't want that kind of thing because she wants liberty and she wants money provided all the time. Why will you want a man to tie himself to one wife when he can fly around to any hotel and whoever is available there, he can have 10 girlfriends, 20 girlfriends. So the degradation in the standard of morality and spirituality is the reason why many people will not get married. For many people, marriage is an inconvenience because they want their unguided life of lust. I want to be able to sleep around anytime I want. I want to be able to be free. I don't want to sit down and then I think that I have a wife and children at home. Many men want that kind of thing. I don't want no responsibility. I don't want to look at a lady and my wife is tapping me and saying, who are you looking at? No. Are you seeing that now? So that degradation in moral and spiritual standards guys and ladies stay together for instance unfortunately sometimes the house belongs to the lady and then the man comes as a squatter because she likes him and he stays there eats her food drives her car watches her television sleeps on her bed enjoys her cushion and the man does not want to get married why should I get married and try to be responsible for a family? When I have gotten a wolf, there is a lady here who is working with federal government. She can work and bring everything. My own is just to be enjoying the money. Degradation in moral and spiritual standards that's created irresponsibility, that's created all kinds of things. And then there have been unbalanced teachings in the body of Christ that have encouraged this kind of living in a bit to bring the church into the revelation of who we are in christ and what christ has done for us and the reality of the fact that we are the righteousness of of god in christ right now and the concept of sin and the concept of holiness and righteousness to in an attempt to um, balance it properly there are individuals that have swung to the other side of the pendulum. And so people are now authorized. That, that conviction of the Holy Spirit towards ungodliness is no longer there. Is that true? So I can, I can do anything I want to do so long as I run back to God and say, Lord, you know that I won't do it again. So we keep playing all these games with ourselves. Is God helping us? I have identified this as the top five reasons why many in the body of Christ may not get married. Confusion as to the concept of the will of God. People have spiritualized that concept of the will of God to their detriment. And then unreasonable standards then difficulty in early establishment then ungodly parental influences and increased breakdown in moral and spiritual